Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Memuna and uh, today we are going to start a very important system of our body that is the nervous system. The learning outcomes after the completion of this lecture all of you should be able to describe the structure, classification and function of nervous system as well as you would be able to compare and contrast the structure and functions of myelinated and unmyelinated neurons. So what is nervous system? Nervous system detect any change that occurs inside or outside the body and then responds accordingly. Along with endocrine system Nervous system controls many important aspects of body functions and both of these systems, the endocrine system as well as the nervous system, they are responsible for maintaining homeostasis. Nervous system consists of central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system includes brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves that are outside the brain and spinal cord. Here in this diagram you can see you can see the central nervous system in the center which consists of brain and spinal cord. The upper portion is the brain and the long elongated um, division is spinal cord. The brain is present inside the cranial cavity and spinal cord is present around vertebral inside the vertebral column. On right and left side you can see the peripheral nervous system. On the left side there is a sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. The sensory nerves are also known as efferent neurons. The efferent neurons or the sensory nerves, they are originated from sensory receptors. Sensory receptors are present in the sensory organs. So we have five types of senses. Here you can see the sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. The sensory receptors are present in the eye, in the ear, in the nose in the tongue and in the skin so these are the sensory receptors from where sensory nerves are originated and they take signals from these receptors and carry them towards the central nervous system so sensory receptors these are the external receptors or these are also called as exterior receptors now we also have interior receptors it means the receptors which are present inside the deep tissues of our body and these are known as chemoreceptors baroreceptors and osmoreceptors you already have studied what are the chemoreceptors and the baroreceptors so from all these receptors any sensory change any change that occurs in these receptors they produce a chemical uh, uh, electrical signal that travels along this efferent neuron or the sensory neuron towards the central nervous system here you can see the central nervous system now the impulses have reached into this system into the central nervous system what happens to this information here all the information that has been gathered from the sens sensory organs it undergoes integration so there is integration of information within the central nervous system and then a decision is taken by the central nervous system that decision is then carried by the motor division of the peripheral nervous system here you can see the motor division of the peripheral nervous system. Motor nerves are also known as efferent nerves or the efferent neurons. These neurons or these nerves carry signals from the central nervous system towards the periphery. 
the periphery uh, they end on the effector organs so from the cns motor nerve carry impulses to the effector organs to produce response the effector organs are of two types number one is the voluntary organs and other one are the involuntary organs voluntary organs include skeletal muscle voluntary means the organs that are under our control we can control consciously these organs and these are the skeletal muscles we can move our skeletal muscles according to our will and the other types of organs effector organs are the cardiac muscle smooth muscles and glands that are present within the body all these three types of organs cannot be controlled by our will we cannot control them consciously these are under unconscious control so these are the two types of organs when motor nerve carries signal from the cns to these organs all the motor nerves which carries signals to the skeletal muscle these are known as somatic nerves and all those nerves which carry signals from the cns towards the cardiac muscle smooth muscle and the glands these are known as autonomic nerve nerves or the autonomic nervous system here you can see the autonomic nervous system is further divided into a sympathetic division and a parasympathetic division and both of these divisions have different works the peripheral nervous system comprises of paired cranial and spinal nerves we have 12 pairs of cranial nerve and 31 pairs of spinal nerves some of these nerves are sensory also known as efferent here i have shown you the sensory division and then some are motor known as efferent nerves and some are mixed mixed means they carry uh, fibers both of sensory and motor both types of fibers are present in the mixed nerve two functional parts are present within the peripheral nervous system these are sensory division and motor division we have already discussed both of them the motor division is involved in activities that are either voluntary activity or involuntary activity voluntary activity activities are controlled by the somatic nervous system and example are the skeletal muscle involuntary activities are controlled by autonomic nervous system and here we have example of smooth muscle cardiac muscles and glands the autonomic nervous system has two divisions sympathetic and parasympathetic so the basic functional unit of nervous system is called neuron neurons conduct nerve impulses these neurons are supported by a very unique connective tissue known as neuroglia each neuron consists of cell body in the diagram below you can see the cell body that is present in the upper portion of the diagram and it is labeled as cell body so each neuron consists of a cell body and its processes uh, on one side upper side you can see multiple processes emerging from the cell body and these processes are known as the multiple processes are known as dendrites in the section below you uh, in the lower portion of the diagram you can see an elongated process that is moving downward and this process is known as axon of the neuron and this axon <clears throat> when it reaches to its target organ it is divided into many terminal branches and these terminal branches are known as terminal buttons 
in this diagram you can see the dendrites then cell body a nucleus is present within the cell body exon hillock exon hillock is the tapered portion of the cell body from where exon is originated and then there is exolema exolema is the outer membrane of the exon you can see the exon and then on the exon the outer covering is seen as neurilemma below neurilemma there is nucleus of shown cell here two types of neurons are shown number 1 is the myelinated on the left side there is a myelinated neuron and on the left side on the right side there is non myelinated neuron in myelinated neuron you can see the node of renvier and it is not present in the non myelinated neuron and also you can see the presence of myelin sheet in myelinated neurons while it is absent from the non myelinated neuron neurons are commonly referred to as nerve cells bundles of axons bound together are called nerves so what is a nerve nerve is basically a collection of axons collection of many axons results in the formation of nerve neurons cannot divide and for survival they need a continuous supply of oxygen and glucose neurons can synthesize their chemical energy chemical energy in the form of atp only from glucose not from amino acids or fatty acids function of the neurons they generate and transmit electrical impulses which are called action potentials the nerve impulse or action potential can be initiated in response to stimuli either from the outside of the body for example touch light waves sound waves any uh, um, uh, chemical substance when it is put on the tongue so these are the stimuli which are present on outside the body or it could be a pain stimulus and nerve impulses can also be generated by stimuli present inside the body for example any change in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood or any change in blood pressure nerve impulses can also be produced by central nervous system in order to produce response by skeletal muscle smooth muscle or heart muscle transmission of nerve signal is both electrical and chemical the action potential traveling down along the nerve axon is an electrical signal the signal between a nerve cell and the next nerve cell in the chain is called is basically chemical so electrical signal a uh, nerve impulse is transmitted through electrical signal within the neuron but nerve impulse is conducted from one neuron to the next neuron through a chemical signal nerve cells cannot be seen by the naked eye central nervous system contains a gray matter and a white matter cell bodies of the neurons they form gray matter of the central nervous system and gray matter is present around the periphery of the brain while on the other hand the gray matter is present in the center of spinal cord groups of cell bodies are called nuclei in the central nervous system it means group of cell bodies are called nuclei when these group of new uh, group of cell bodies are present within the brain and spinal cord and when these group of cell bodies are present in the peripheral nervous system outside the brain and spinal cord these are called ganglia axons and dendrites are extensions of cell bodies 
and form the white matter of the nervous system now here we can see that the ex, uh, white matter is present deep in the brain and these uh, this white matter is present in the form of tracts and in spinal cord this white matter is present outside the gray matter it means along around the periphery of spinal cord they are referred to as nerves or nerve fibers outside the brain and spinal cord the white matter that is present outside the brain and spinal cord is known as nerve now axons each nerve cell has one axon which begins at a tapered area of the cell body which is called axon hillock they carry impulses away from the cell body and are usually longer than the dendrites sometimes as long as 100 cm dendrites dendrites these are the many, these are the many short processes that receive and carry incoming impulses towards the cell body they have the same structure as axons but are usually shorter and branching so here in this diagram you can see the cell body and within the cell body there is present a nucleus from this cell body the purple colored extensions you can see the purple colored extensions and these are the dendrites then you can see a yellow colored extension this is axon of this neuron and this is myelinated neuron here you can see the myelin sheet and in between two myelin sheets you can see the node of renvier and then axon is terminated as axon terminals many small branches known as axon terminals the membrane of the axon is called axolemma and it encloses the cytoplasm now coming towards the myelinated neurons as well as non myelinated neurons so the myelinated neurons are the large axons and those of the peripheral nerves that are surrounded by myelin sheet all those neurons that are surrounded by myelin sheet they are called myelinated neurons any large uh, axon and the axons of the peripheral nerves these are basically myelinated neurons in myelinated neurons there are series of schwann cells there are series of schwann cells that are arranged along the length of the axon here in this diagram you can see a series of schwann cells all these blue colored uh, these are the schwann cells individual schwann cells so there are many schwann cells around a single axon you can see a large number of schwann cells that are wrapped multiple times around the axon each one cell is wrapped around the axon so that it is covered by a number of concentric layers of schwann cell membrane so here in this diagram you can clearly see that the yellow colored part is the axon and the outer membrane of the axon is known as neurilemma so around the neurilemma you can see concentric circles and these concentric circles are basically the layers of the schwann cell membrane this is a one schwann cell cross section uh, uh, in this uh, here a cross section can be seen and in this cross section there is a single um, schwann cell and this schwann cell has been wrapped multiple times around the axon to form a myelin sheet and the outer side you can see the nucleus nucleus of schwann cell and the outermost membrane of the schwann cell is called neurilemma which is basically the sheet of the schwann cell and between two schwann cells there is a node of renvier you can see in the diagram there is a node of renvier and this node of renvier is devoid of any schwann cell here the outermost covering 
is neurilemma just a single layer of neurilemma there is no concentric layers present in the node of renvier so this uh, basically this myelin sheet provides an insulation so it provides an insulation to the conduction of nerve impulse impulse cannot be conducted along this myelin sheet so the impulse moves in a jumping manner from one node of renvier to the next node of renvier and this increases the velocity of conduction of nerve impulse in myelinated neurons between the layers of plasma membrane there is a small amount of fatty substance which is called myelin the outermost layer of the schwann cell which is the plasma membrane is called neurilemma there are tiny areas which are devoid of myelin sheet between adjacent schwann cells and these are called nodes of renvier which assist in the rapid transmission of nerve impulses in myelinated neurons this diagram is taken from ross and wilson and here on the left side you can see myelinated neuron and in the center there is there basically there are many many unmyelinated neurons and again on the right 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 most side there is a myelinated neuron on the left side in the myelinated neuron you can see a single schwann cell has been wrapped multiple times around the axon to form a myelin sheet and there here you can see the schwann cell cytoplasm the schwann cell nucleus neurilemma the axon and the myelin sheet in the central diagram you can see multiple axons have been passed through the membrane of the schwann cell there is a single schwann cell through which large number of axons have been passed so there is just a single layer of schwann cell membrane around the unmyelinated neuron the uh, the membrane of the schwann cell does not make multiple layers in case of unmyelinated neurons again on the right most side you can see the myelinated neurons and there are multiple layers of schwann cell membrane which results in the formation of myelin sheet non myelinated neurons these are also called unmyelinated neurons so which type of neurons in our body are unmyelinated these are post ganglionic autonomic nerve fibers as well as small fibers in the central nervous system these are basically non myelinated nerve fibers in this type a number of axons are embedded in schwann cells plasma membrane here you can see in the central diagram that a large number of neurons have been passed through the plasma membrane of the schwann cell so there is a single covering of around the uh, neurons the speed of transmission of nerve impulses is significantly slower in non myelinated nerve fibers why the speed is extremely slow because there the impulse has to travel along whole length of the axon while in case of myelinated nerve fibers myelin sheet has provide insulation and due to this insulation impulse have to jump from one node of renvier to the next node of renvier and this increases the velocity of nerve impulse so the difference between non myelinated and myelinated neurons first one is the presence of myelin sheet around axon and in unmyelinated neurons or non myelinated neurons myelin sheet is absent number 2 in myelinated neurons there are nodes of renvier while in unmyelinated neurons there are no nodes of renvier and the th third difference is 
the speed of conduction of nerve impulse is much faster in myelinated neuron while nerve impulse conduction is extremely slow in non myelinated neurons so with this i end my lecture and thank you very much